Good morning, guys. Welcome to Talent Blazer, India's latest edtech platform that is there to help you at every stage of your career. Now, I am your teacher and mentor in this journey, and I am covering UGC NET Paper Two Commerce. The subject code for the same is zero eight. And I have already covered so many units. So if you are joining me for the very first time, and if you if you are here on the channel for the very first time, you can check out so many units that I have already covered. This is unit two. Accounting and auditing, and I have already made a video on this. So this is video two on accounting and auditing. So if you haven't watched the previous video, I would really recommend you to watch the previous one because if you are following the sequence, you are going into the right direction, and that will be helpful for your examination preparation. That is UGC NET, and as we all know, the UGC NET paper will be going to conduct it soon. And I hope most of the viewers and the watchers are. Watching the video for the same because they have prepared for their examination and they or they are here for quick revision. So it depends upon what your goal is. And in today's session, I I want everyone to stick till the end because there is a I would like to call you a good preparation strategy or a, a surprise for all you guys who those who are watching the video. And it would be a very interesting thing that you have to you have to wait for the end. Till the end, for uh, you know, to see what the surprise is, and it is very important to know. And I will share a few tips so that you can ace your examination. And with that, we should start chapter unit two, and that is accounting and auditing. So we'll uh, talk about few concepts, right? So for the purpose of maintaining uniformity and consistency in accounting records, as you know. That you know, we certainly know that India follows a certain accounting standard. But what if, what if an individual sometimes who lives in India, sometimes in some other country, then you need to check whether how their business is running, in what part of their business earns revenue from India, comes it in the category uh, of taxation under Indian taxation scheme. So there are so many things, and there are so many accounting. Uh, terms, definition, and let's suppose I'm studying accounting in India, and if I do want to uh, pursue a career in foreign countries, I don't want to be like someone who doesn't know accounting. I don't want to start from the scratch again, and that is why there is need of uniformity that was arise certainly when accounting concepts came back, and uh, that is why the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants they come with certain Journal accepted rules by the accounting profession. So those rules are followed everywhere. Those are uh, you know universally acceptable. So it's not like that is only applicable only in India. But no, that's not the case. Those are universally applicable so that we can maintain consistency across the globe. And that is by for maintaining uniformity and consistency in accounting records, we created accounting concepts. So those journal concepts are being Accepted universally everywhere, right? So this this was given by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, and they gave the they gave us certain common rules. Now we'll talk about them one by one, right? So the first one is entity concept or slash business entity concept. We have studied this. I think uh, this was the first chapter in our eleventh textbook. So. We all know that business is treated as a separate and a distinct entity from its owner. So let's suppose if few of my friends started a business, so we as the owners are different, have a separate and distinct entity from the business that we have started, namely X Y Z Limited. So that is a different entity, and we are the owners. So whatever accounting transaction that are being made in the name of business will be. Carried or or recorded in the books of account of business, not in our books of account. Due to this concept, due to entity concept, whatever credit, whatever the capital that we have invested as owners will be a liability to business because they have to repay us back. It's our money, not the business money, not the company's money. So it's our money. Company has to repay it back. So it's a liability of business. Because as we know, the business or the company is an entity itself. They can enter into a transaction. They can enter into contracts. A case can be filed upon them. So that's 
all because of NTD concept. Right. So this concept also helps in ascertaining the profit of the business as only business expenses and revenue are recorded in the business income statement, and private and personal expenses of owners are ignored. So if we are buying something in in name of company's book, that that will be ignored. We will just be focusing upon business income and business expenses. So that would be uh, you know uh, mostly interested to mostly interested for our investors, and that is why. The first entity concept came in business entity concept. Second is money measurement concept. As the name suggests, only those transactions and events are recorded in the books of accounts, which can be expressed and me measured in terms of money. So we are not going to let's suppose there is an employee in our company, right? That comes under the HR policies. If an employee is performing exceptionally well, they are on the same grade pay. Let's suppose the grade pay is seventy k, seventy thousand. And everyone, uh, let's suppose an employee named G has been performing exceptionally well. So we cannot say that okay in the books of account that G has performed uh, exceptionally well. No, we cannot. We have to measure only those transactions that are can be recorded in the monetary terms, right? Only those transactions and events are recorded in the books and accounts which can be expressed and measured in terms of money. This concepts guide accountant about what to record and what not to record. So we'll get to know. Okay, I don't have to write about the G employee just because he is performing well. Because in the book of statement, in the book of accounts, we have to measure those transactions which can be measured in terms of monetary terms. Right. Third is periodicity concept or accounting period concept. Due to the concept life of an enterprise, it is divided into time intervals. Right. Which Are prepared to show the performance and financial position. So, we generally get the balance sheet after one year of a company to know where the company stands after one financial year. So, there is an accounting period considered that after one year you have to show what your performance is like, so that your investors, your shareholders, gets a picture of whether the company is going into the right direction, whether whether the company is following the visions or goals that they were actually trying to initially. Or they are moving into, or they are diverting into a different direction. So, during different time intervals, they have to showcase their performances and their financial position. So that is because of the periodicity concept that they have to show that okay, like let's suppose there is a company and without showing or you know uh, making public their accounts or their performance. And uh, after a gap of ten years, you don't know what your money is being invested to, right? You have invested that money into the company, and what is company doing? You have no any, you don't have any idea. And if there is no periodicity concept, the company is not. Uh, company is like will show after five years. Company is like will show after ten years, or whenever we like to. And that uh, then that will arise for a difficult situation because you will think like that. Okay, the company will show us the growth in ten years, fifteen years, or any num any number of years that they are promising. And that, as an investor, uh, creates a dilemma whether I should continue uh, as a shareholder of that company or I should take out my money and uh, invest somewhere else. So that is be now because of the help of periodicity concept or accounting period concept, I know that after a year, the company is performing to the way that they were all, they were saying initially, right? So these are the few first concept entity concept. Now we talk about accrual concept. These are all the concepts that we have studied in our basic accounting. So I'm just giving a quick revision so that you guys know what all these concepts are. So transaction are recorded at the time when it has taken place and not when the settlement in cash take place. Now we all know that you know some certain sales are being made on credit. So if there is a certain sales that are being made on, let's suppose we're talking about 10th of June. So if I am a seller, if I have made some You know, if I have sell few goods, let's suppose ten thousand goods to a particular company, and they said they will pay me after a while, let's suppose two months. Now, I will record the transaction in my book with today's date and not after two months because it's happening today, and the settlement it will happen in future. I will get get the cash in future. So transaction are recorded at the time when it has taken place and not when the settlement in cash taken place. So let's suppose X Y Z Limited or any company will pay me after two months. 
so that is the time that they are taking to pay me the cash but transaction will be recorded in my book of accounts on 10th of june due to this concept outstanding expenses included in profit and loss at the year end advance receipt from debtors is not taken as sales as per this concept so if somebody is giving you an advance and you haven't delivered your goods let's suppose you know if you receive some advance payment for an order that you are processing let's suppose i have to provide them with 1 lakh orders and they have paid me to any advance amount now what is happening that i have received the advance amount but the sales has not been taken as per this concept so when the sales will be taken place the day i'll be delivering the goods then i have to re- you know record those transactions it helps in knowing actual expense and actual income during a particular time period and it helps in calculating the net profit of business so you'll get the idea okay what is the net profit because you have accrued your income you definitely will get that income because we think uh, there is like you know concept of bad debt bad debts as well but we have to ignore that for a while but we think that there won't be any bad debt so we'll we will be receiving our money so that comes under accrual concept now the fifth point matching concept as the name states the matching concept states that the revenue and the expenses incurred to earn revenue must belong to the same account link period so we have to make sure that uh, we are earning some revenue and there are some expenses that have been incurred to earn the revenue let's suppose i, I get the 1 lakh pieces order right now for making that 1 lakh pieces out order i need to run my machines i need to make some actual expenses i need to make those product i need to manufacture those products and i have to pay some cost to the labor say pay some money and then after all the expenses i have done i have produced 1 lakh product right and the revenue whenever i deliver those products and within some time frame i gets my money i get my money so the matching concept states the revenue and the expenses incurred to earn revenue must belong to the same account link period therefore the matching concept implies that all revenues earned during an accounting year whether received not received during that year and the all cost incurred whether paid not paid during the year should be taken into account while ascertaining profit or loss for that particular year now in this case because uh, while I, i am giving an example i am saying that let's suppose i am not able to receive the money that i was supposed to after two months and it takes a while because the party that actually uh, you know wanted to uh, uh, is having a tough time is having a difficult time a difficult financial time to pay me off so they take uh, they pay me in the next financial year so now what is happening do i have to make sure that okay this is uh, you know a different transaction has to be recorded for that altogether no because i have already mentioned about that in my books in the last year stating that you know what i will be receiving this amount in future because this expense to earn that revenue has been incurred in the that particular financial year so according to the matching concept i have to state both the revenue and the expenses that are incurred to earn the revenue whether received or not received during that particular accounting year I have to make sure that i make the uh, transactions or the recording according to according in my book that is the matching concept now the sixth point is going concern concept so you can easily de- derive this one from the name as well the business will continue for an indefinite period and there is no intention to close the business or to reduce its size significantly so while we are talking about the you know accounting transaction and recording those transaction we have to keep this in mind that we are not going to shut down our business we are going to run it forever so though forever can uh, can vary but we have to keep this in mind that we will continue it for an indefinite period we will not continue it for 5 10 15 we will continue for indefinite period for generations to come and there is no intention to you know close down the business or reduce its size significantly due to this concept distinction is made between an expenditure which gives benefit for a long period of time and those which will be exhausted quickly fixed assets and current assets are categorized as per this concept so we know because when we buy heavy machineries we are not going to uh, think that okay after 5 years i will shut down my business i will sell this machinery no when you are buying a heavy machinery you thinking that your business will grow and you will further buy more 
heavy machinery fees in future and that is how your business is going to expand so this is and that is we have that is why we have made classification of fixed asset and current assets current asset meets your requirement for within one year right they ex exhaust quickly but whereas fixed asset you know they are there in your accounting books or uh, with you for a while for few decades even so that is because of going concern concept that is why because because of that we are able to distinguish between fixed asset or current asset that is because of going concern concept 